I want to talk to you about something really important today that I think you need to know about and I think you probably don't know about. It's something that is affecting the NHS and is a risk to patient safety. So this is a risk for you and your family. This is about a new role that's been brought into the NHS called Physician Associates and Anesthesia Associates, known as PAs and AAs. And I'm going to tell you why in this video I think you need to know about it and why you also may be worried like I am. So there are currently over 3,000 PAs in the NHS at the moment and the government want to increase this to 10,000 by 2036 and there's less AAs so there's going to be about 2,000 of those by 2036. That's the plan. Sounds good you're thinking. We haven't got enough doctors. I can't get through to my GP. My waiting lists are huge. Surely we do need some more uh, healthcare members to help prop up the NHS. Well, although that is true, and I appreciate that NHS is pretty much on its knees at the moment, and there's many reasons for that, currently it feels like that this PA and AA is a bit like the straw that broke the camel's back. And we're being flooded with these uh, not medics, they're not doctors, uh, to try and prop up the NHS when actually it could really be the downfall. So um, a PA is someone who has got a, usually a science-based degree and then does this two-year PA training course and then they can start work. Um, so they can come and work in GP practices or they can go and work in the hospital straight after that two-year degree, which is a master's degree, which is very different to doctors. So um, it's very hard to even become a medical student to get uh, onto the course. It's incredibly difficult. And then it's usually a five-year degree followed by two years of junior doctor. And then you specialize um, into your training place of whatever you want to be. So for me, I wanted to be a GP. But if you want to do something else, then you have to go many, many years. And when it's often they're very competitive, you've got to get PhDs, this and that. So when you see a consultant at the hospital, you know they've been through a lot and are very knowledgeable on that subject compared to potentially a PA who has just finished their two-year course and started work. So this is why you need to know. PAs are not meant to replace doctors. They're supposed to help doctors. In fact, the name was originally physician assistants, which makes sense. You can imagine them on the ward, checking bloods, doing bloods, um, maybe do, taking some histories, and that would be helpful for doctors. Unfortunately, what's happened is the role has changed. So now they're called physician associates. Who knows what that means? It sounds grand, doesn't it? Especially when junior doctors have that label, which makes them sound like they're kind of medical students when even though they could be the most senior doctor in the hospital overnight and at weekends. So physician associates um, are not doctors, but are actually replacing doctors, uh, even though they're not meant to. So we're finding out that they're replacing GPs and GP practices. We're finding out that they're on wards taking the jobs from the doctors who should be training um, and they are seeing you in clinics, they're carrying out operations, they're doing all these things and you probably think they're a doctor and that's part of the problem because even if you were told they're a physician associate would you have known what that meant but a lot of the time people are not being even told that. So there's a lot to unpick here and I will say I was really hesitant to make this video um, some doctors have been speaking out, there have been some newspaper articles about it and in retaliation these doctors are being told that they are bullying and that they should be kind, even the GMC has kind of come forward and saying be kind to your fellow colleagues. Um, but actually, so this is not about any personal attack on peers, I know there are loads of really brilliant peers who are trying to do their best in the NHS, trying to do their best for patient safety and care. So this isn't about anyone or any attack on anything. I just think that the role has become very unclear and patient safety is at risk. So I'm sorry if I'm not being kind, but I think that's how important it is to get this message out there and for you guys to know. So just a reminder, if you're seeing one of these PAs, in hospital, maybe they're helping deliver your baby. Maybe they're working in a specialist pediatric unit, seeing the most sick patients, the sickest children in the country, which they are doing. And they're certainly taking up jobs, replacing GPs up and down the country. And so the two year course, it's been seen that some peers refer to it as kind of a fast track medical degree. It isn't. Um, some of the, um, the university courses really proud of the fact that they have a 100% success rate yet again on the PA uh, master's exams, which actually just shows how easy they are because I'm telling you now, there is not a 100% pass rate on medical finals. There's even now a PA course that is distance learning. So it's a 30 month course you can do from the comfort of your own home with only four weeks per year uh, clinical work, out learning clinical work. So you might have somebody seeing you, trying to manage you, um, who has only had 
a few weeks of actual clinical training. They cannot prescribe and they cannot order what's called ionizing radiation, so things like x-rays and CTs. So that is a limitation, but they are, that's potentially going to change in the future. They have been around for over 20 years in the NHS, but there's been very few of them up until recently where it's kind of exploded. And they are currently completely unregulated. There's a voluntary register they can join. And there's actually some examples where PAs are even working in hospitals who haven't even passed their exams, and yet they're still working as PAs in the hospital. So it's, it's like a bit like the Wild West out there. And so there have been calls for regulation. Certainly the PAs themselves have been calling for regulation, which is great. There's been a bit of a debate because it's been agreed that they're going to be regulated by the GMC, the General Medical Council. Now, you may not know what that is, but the GMC has been set up for doctors to regulate doctors. And we are all given a GMC number. And to prove I'm a doctor, I often have to write my number down that shows I am a qualified doctor. But now peers are going to get GMC numbers. They're going to be regulated by the GMC, which is going to further blur the confusion. Is a physician associate a doctor? Is this person I've just seen a doctor? There's even thoughts that they might end up calling themselves um, senior PA, consultant PA. So if you were seeing the consultant in the clinic or on the ward, you're probably going to assume that's actually a doctor who's been to medical degree, got, got a medical degree, done all the training, and actually it might be a PA who's just got very little experience. And remember, they can start work the moment they finish that two-year course. They can head out onto the wards, onto GP, into GP practices. They could be seeing you, managing you and your family. So one of the difficulties with only doing a two-year course and then, and then starting to work is you can often feel quite confident. I've done my training, I squeezed that medical degree into two years, I, I'm often available to manage these patients. And it often gives an overconfidence because I think as medical students, we're often really warned how much we don't know. And there's this thing called, you don't know what you don't know. And I think PAs have a, a little area where they can ask for help if there's something they know they don't know, but there's a lot of areas of things they don't know they don't know. Um, we often say things like, if you hear hooves, Think of horses, not zebras, but you need to know that sometimes it could be a zebra and you need to know how to look out for that. And that's the breadth and depth of the medical training we get. And unfortunately, there have been some real world examples where patients have come to harm and even death, where they've been seen by a PA and not a doctor. Um, you may have seen these headlines in the newspapers um, and it's obviously really sad. And uh, the examples were often where the patient thought they were seen by a doctor and they did not realize it was a PA. So that really is the PA's fault. They should have explained their role. They should have asked for help. A doctor should have been properly supervising them. PA's response is often, well, that's really sad, but patients die under the care of doctors as well, which is true. Uh, really sadly, patients do die when they're looked after by doctors. Errors are made. However, how likely is it do you think an error is going to be made by someone who's done years and years of really intense training and masses of exams versus someone who's done an undergraduate degree and then a two-year? Which one is more likely to make the errors? I think it's obvious. And actually, we're already seeing evidence of this. There's something called a never event, which is an event that is uh, patients come to serious harm and it was avoidable. And we're seeing statistics that show that PAs have got much higher chance of having a never event than a doctor. So you might think to yourself, surely it's better to have someone, even if they're not as qualified, on the wards, in GP practices versus no one, because we've all heard there's not enough doctors, right? But actually, this is pretty much a manufactured problem because what happens with doctors is you finish your medical school, you do what's called your foundation year training, and then you specialize. In order to specialize, you have to get onto a training post. So you may become a training post to become a GP or to become a pediatrician or whatever it is, you then be, you have to get onto a training post. And the competition for these training posts is rife. So there are many doctors who are applying for training posts and do not get a training post. So they never have the chance to become a pediatrician, to become a GP. So we know, for example, I'm a GP. In 2023, there were almost three doctors applying for every one GP training post. And this gets higher in, in, in every specialty 
there are too many people, too many doctors applying. So we know, for example, if you wanted to work in uh, reproductive and sexual health, I think it's 34 doctors are applying for every one training post. So actually what we need to do is instead of flooding uh, more non-doctors into these roles, we need to open up the training places so that more of the doctors can get onto the training places to become the specialists that we need. So really, ultimately, this is about putting money into the training places rather than employing the peers. And what I'm talking about money, you may be aware that the junior doctors have been striking um, because they're currently on a lot less money than they were um, at, at maybe 10 years ago. Um, so they want to match what they used to be on, which will be a 35% pay uplift, which sounds like a lot, but really they're on not very much money. And so I also mentioned that the PAs can't prescribe and order x-rays and they need to work under the supervision of a doctor. So they're often working under the supervision of a junior doctor and asking the junior doctor to do the prescriptions and order their x-rays and CT scans. And they are earning a lot more than the junior doctor. So you can imagine if you're a junior doctor working nights, earning hardly anything, you've got a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt from your medical degree, you've been doing years and years of training, and then someone swans in who's only done two year course, earning a lot more money than you and asking you to do that, can you do my prescription, can you order my x-ray? You can understand why the junior doctors are feeling a little bit affronted, and unfortunately they're leaving. So the NHS is losing doctors hand over fist. So if you go to like Waterloo Station, which is outside, which is close to one of the medical schools, you'll see adverts for like, doctors come to Canada or come to New Zealand. I get, doc I get adverts all the time in my email um, uh, list for come and be a GP in Australia. Oh, there's a beach, isn't it lovely? So unfortunately we are losing doctors. And I think although the PA issue is just one issue, there are many other problems with the NHS. It does feel like it's a bit of a slap in the face for doctors. And actually, it's not only affecting junior doctors, we know that it's affecting GPs. Many of my GP colleagues, you may be really surprised to hear this, cannot get work. There are loads of GPs out of work. Now, surely that makes no sense because, you know, you've been ringing up at eight o'clock every morning trying to get an appointment with your GP. Why are there not more GP appointments if there's all these GPs out of work? Well, the government has got a scheme known as the ARRS scheme, where practices are given a pot of money to employ non-doctors and non-nurses. So they can employ a PA if they want, but they can't use that money to get a practice nurse or a GP. So it's kind of, and, and practices aren't being given much money, they're also struggling financially. So it's kind of understandable. They're looking to see where they can save money. And if they're getting money for a PA versus having to pay out for a GP, then that's what they're doing. So GPs up and down the country are really struggling to find work. Um, they're having to take a lot less uh, salary, having to reduce their salary. Um, never thought that if you would be a doctor, you'd be out of work, but that is what's happening. Okay, so I may have convinced you by now that this is something a little bit to be worried about. They are gonna have GMC regulation. It's not great, it's under the GMC, but at least they're gonna have regulation. They may soon be getting prescribing rights and um, ionizing radiation rights. We'll see about that. But there is a bit of a, a noise now um, from up above where things like the Royal College of Surgeons are worried about it and have, put, have kind of said they're concerned and want to put a pause to the PA training. We know the Royal College of uh, Anesthetists are also worried um, because the plan for the AAs, which I haven't really talked about, is there to be, um, I think, a three to one ratio. So for every anaesthetist, there will be three um, AAs under them. So there could be three surgeries happening at once and just one anaesthetist kind of rotating, making sure everything's okay. So you just gotta really keep your fingers crossed that there's not like at least two or worse three emergencies because the anaesthetist, there's only one of them. So that is a concern. Um, and can I just say that when you are under general anaesthetic, the anaesthetist is looking after your brain and your heart, keeping you alive. So they do probably the most important job. And, and if I was having an operation, I'd really want an anaesthetist looking after me. And I would imagine you would want the same as well. So things may change. And this, I may have to update this video as things go on. Um, but as it stands, I know that the profession, we doctors are all worried. We're aware patients don't really know enough about it. So hopefully you've learned enough now. You are in your right to ask to see um, a doctor. Um, if you want to, it may mean you have to wait longer. But just remember there are other health professionals also, um, certainly in GP practices, who are brilliant and I wouldn't want to put you off seeing them. And a PA may well have a role. I don't see how they fit into general practice, but perhaps that they still have a role and 
can be really helpful in hospitals. But at the moment, it, like I said, it feels a bit like the Wild West. So there needs to be absolute clarity um, on their scope, their regulation, and what's going to happen when things go wrong. We've seen examples where, uh, in fact, at the hospital local to where I work, um, PAs have been working in the emergency department a &E and have been prescribing controlled drugs. So things like morphine, and diazepam, um, addictive substances. They have been prescribing them themselves, which they shouldn't do, that's illegal. I mean, officially that's kind of drug dealing, um, but apparently nothing has come of it. So that's kind of worrying. It, this is a, a kind of an example of what it feels like everything's just being brushed under the carpet a little bit about the PAs and the AAs, or just doesn't matter, that was just a PA, just, you know, whereas if a doctor had done that, we'd be struck off probably by the GMC. So I am worried, I think you need to know my husband keeps saying to me, why are they doing this? What's happening? And I don't have the answer as to if they're expensive and they're dangerous and not trained as well as doctors. What's the kind of reason why this is happening? And I don't know. Some people suggest it could be that the government is keen to try and separate um, and privatise the healthcare. So if you can afford it, you'll pay for private healthcare where you'll be seen and dealt with by doctors. And if you can't afford it, you'll be seen and dealt with by non-doctors, which includes peers. Perhaps that's true. I'm not sure. I'm not a politician. But something is amiss as to why this is being pushed so much. Um, and instead, I'd like to suggest we just focus on having money to pay junior doctors properly and get more training posts. So hopefully you've learned a little bit there about what it is that I'm worried about and uh, certainly fellow medics are worried about. Let me know what you think. Did you know about PAs and AAs? Have you heard of them before? Have you even come across them? Have you been seen by one? Was it good? Was it bad? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear what you think and uh, we'll see what happens in the future. Thanks for watching.